G'day, and welcome to another replay. Again, Green Tooth Gorge. And uh, this time, we are playing with people that I don't actually know. Red Things Goes Faster is playing as the Chaos Lord, and he's in that awesome, awesome skin. Look at that. Sweet. And he's up against uh, Arka, who is playing as the Ravener Alpha. I don't think there is a skin yet for the uh, Tyranids. And it's been interesting to see how this goes. I don't actually know these players. It's hard to tell. With the way that Steam allows you to just rename your nicks at any time is a real pain, I think, for an RTS because it sort of ruins the community because you are unable to actually start to recognise players. Okay, so we've got uh, two Termagant Broods coming out straight away, which is a very common build, going for that ranged blob thing. And we have two Heretics and a Chaos Space Marine. Now a lot of uh, people when they're playing Chaos Lord go for a super power by getting uh, a double double tax but the I actually believe I actually play class myself and I believe that the double heretics is a much more versatile build order even when playing with the uh, chaos lord and he's doing the right thing with the chaos lord getting right out into the action he's powerful enough and strong enough to really be able to take the fight deep into enemy territory he did miss that kill the weak attack though, which was a bit of a setback. And this should be, now that his army's coming down, Arizara is coming down, all the models will be retreating. These space marines have better get out of there quick smart. So it looks like he's already uh, getting that initial Tyranid map presence that they're so famous for in tier, at the beginning of tier 1. But, of course, they pay for that through... That map presence is paid through a, a wreck loss because they uh, will always suffer some casualties. And again, using his namesake, Red Goes Faster, he's slingshotting his... characters over using the Corn Worship. Corn is... Probably the most, uh, sorry for that beeping, I didn't, forgot to turn off Skype. But uh, Corn Worship is probably the most uh, useful worship in the game. It has, um, that uh, speed up effect is absolutely brilliant and of course it works on armoured vehicles as well, while Nurgle only works on bio creatures. And... Uh, Zinch, Zinch is uh, very good as well, but this is sort of limited in scope. Should see a Doom Blast here. That's not going to be enough to force those guys away. They're going to get straight back and just pop into there. Looks like they finally fixed that bug where you can see them actually get inside the <laughs> inside the tunnels. But again, this is going to have to force them off. I think that was a wise decision, trying to destroy the tunnel rather than going for anything, any kind of kill. I'm not sure getting into this garrison is particularly a good idea. But here we should be able to see some of the Chaos Lord's might. Unfortunately there is no melee unit, so his kill the weak isn't going to be quite as effective, and with those crippling poison, yeah, just not even a, a chance. Meanwhile, we have our first warrior brood out. And Noise Marine coming out, which is interesting. I'm actually a big fan of the Noise Marine, but I completely agree that they're not actually that good. I mean, they're very good if you can get them to work, but uh, they are expensive and they severely limit tier 2, uh, you know, the speed at which you get to tier 2, and Chaos's tier 2 is definitely where they shine. You can see the synapse starting to go, so they've got that range buff, 
should hop into that building or retreat once he retreats, which would send back these heretics as well. And here comes the noise marines. Let's have a look at them with the new skin. They look pretty much the same. And good doom blast, but those noise marines, lucky that they, uh, they're going to have to get out of there quick smart. Oh, he's actually sending them into the fight. Cacophony. Right up into the middle of them, and Cacophony is what I think is going to happen here. Yes. Very, very good use of uh, the worship there. You must remember that these are very, very weak units and easy to kill, so a lot of players probably would have retreated then. Which. Was, uh, yeah, a lot of players would have retreated there, but yeah, it's a good idea taking out that stuff. But that slingshotting up and then cacophying into the mass blob was actually a very, very good idea and one that I'm going to steal next time I'm playing, because that was awesome. Okay, so everything's very, very even at the moment. You can see here the increased range. They've increased the range, but they haven't increased the the range of the actual purple stuff, which is a little bit annoying. These guys better get out of there quit smart, and they're going to lose models. Ooh. Extremely lucky not to lose a model there. And even with his... With going for this, the Noise Marine, he has uh, gone into Tier 2 fairly quickly, beating the... beating the Tyranid player. Yes, it's so important to uh, find and destroy these tunnels. Here's another gem bash going on. This is extremely important. Cacophony. There we go. But without backup, they're just going to get straight up and bash them. So they should move backwards into the range of the, the guns. There we go. And they could have still been shooting. So that was a bit of a micro mistake there. It's very easy to forget about those guns. Let's just follow this range blob. Looks like they've found the Chaos Lord. He is not going to be able to do much. He's, he still hasn't got any upgrades. That's a power. Nice attack. But that power drain from the... Oh, this could be terrible. Yeah, the power drain from getting the Noise Marine has set him back in war gear. As for the war gear, pretty much standard war gear. We are getting the adrenal glands finally on the wires. We've already got one of them up. We've got some uh, nice uh, capping going on with the spare heretic squad. This one hasn't even been upgraded, but it has been given the grenade launchers, which is probably a good idea when you're facing a Tyranid blob. Remembering that they lose their extremely good Doom Blast ability. These guys are still sitting around in this stump. Have they really been in there the whole time? No, that's the... That's the... Uh, Noise Marines, not the attacks. And here we go, I'm trying to get those caps back because you're on a three, a three point cap at the moment, and that is just extremely, extremely really bad. You know, you get like I think it's like three a second. And the the Noise Marines have been upgraded to that huge knockback, which of course synergizes very very well with the Chaos Lord because he doesn't get affected by that knockback while all other uh, Chaos heroes will actually get knocked back at the same time so 
if you have a heavy melee army, it's actually quite good. If you're the Chaos Lord. And some nice Havoc action here. I'd like to see this Havoc go for the corn upgrade at some time. Because uh, that really absolutely obliterates uh, Tyranids. Because Tyranids, they are going to be ranged blobbing, which means being suppressed, I mean, it does affect your fire rate, but it's not quite as bad as they'll have all sorts of characters coming in, like these warrior broods, and the closer they get to the corn, the, the more damage it does. It just does an insane amount of damage. Next, kill the weak. I mean, not kill the weak, sorry, uh, let the galaxy burn. And there's Kill the Weak. Now, Let the Galaxy Burn is a very, very good ability. And it's quite easy to. I mean, if they're not paying attention, you can really burn their creatures down because it does have a damage over time effect. You can see that tremendous range of that. that of those noise marines but yeah I, I just I just think the noise marines would have done much better to stay in their original form and use them that uh, trick with the to use them to uh, disable the range blob and cacophony the warrior groups I think that would have been a much better use of them Unfortunately, uh, oh, here's these little dudes. I've got to find out what the hell these guys are. They look so cool. Okay, kill the weak should go off. No, he's going kill weak. Finally, a blood crusher coming out. That really late blood crusher, which is unfortunately, I think, a bit too late. I mean, we're getting into tier three, and it looks like he has upgraded with the corn. No, he hasn't. Still no upgrades on the space marines either. But there seems to be quite a lot of melee going on here. I'd like to see the uh, the big gavel spear thing. It's got such range. It's actually a pretty good place to stop those guys. They can fire on this, protect this node, they can fire on this node, and they can fire here. It's quite actually a very good place. I think they can even reach this node here from this building. So that's making a lot more sense, the choice. And it's going to quickly come out and try and cap something, I guess. Meanwhile, the entire Tyranid army is basically at base, except for a few, except for a couple of squads. Get back and do some worship. Worship. Looks like they're going to get into the building in time. Actually, very, very good game presence by Red Things Go Faster here, bringing these units around to set up here in the preparation for the attack in the middle was very, very well read. Those heretics are in trouble from those little dudes. Oh, it looks like they're going into melee. Everyone's going to have to get out of there. Nice Doom Blast to hold up that retreat. And the 
Better get out of there now, man. Carnifex, hey, what are you what are you doing? Okay, looks like he was in the process of building a plague marine, but decided to cancel it to allow him to reinforce. And now he's building a blood crusher instead. He just cancelled the plague marine twice, so a lot of indecision here by red things. Oh man, that guy almost died. Now, this is actually interesting. Does the repair actually go faster than the regen? Can you stack the repair and the regen from the from the worship? I'm not sure. Okay, that can't affect has the middle pretty locked down, so it's time for him to go out and send troops to either side of the other victory points. Which is exactly what he's doing. Without corn worship, those demons are more than useless. And here comes the flank. And that was an absolute rout. I really think that that was probably a bad decision to even try and go for that. Very, very costly engagement there. And looks like he did get the cap off, which was quite cool. But look at this, just all over the map, spare units are just decapping. comes a plague marine to help with those things. I don't think we've seen he's got a lot of red. I'm not quite sure why we're not seeing any uh, chaos abilities. The chaos have some very very good abilities. You know doing a blood sacrifice in that last engagement and then adding four more squads might have been extremely useful. I don't know these uh, marines are in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he sees the Plague Marines and goes away. Let the Galaxy Burn? No. I probably would have done a Let the Galaxy Burn and push them backwards. And here you can see, I think he's probably going to go around for a flank here. Once again, kind of fix rage. Yep, there's the blood sacrifice, which I was expecting to see last engagement. And very, very well done. He knows that those uh, blood sacrifice, they're only on a little time for a limited time, so it's better to just. Get some more rocket launchers into that Carnifex. Nice. Well, that was a very, very good engagement, and you could see exactly he doesn't have enough time to reset up, unfortunately. I still think that uh, a corn, a corn upgrade on the Chaos Havocs. Oh, he has got Mark of Corn now. Good. I'm pretty sure that wasn't active in that last fight. And now we 
receiving a push from the top at the same time, yes. Galaxy Burn on his own troops. Very, very interesting play. Galaxy Burn on his own melee troops who was phase shift at the time, so they don't receive damage. And it'd be interesting to see exactly what he gets on this Chaos Dreadnought, because the Dreadnoughts themselves... Oh, it looks like he's going for the Zinch. That's a good choice, because the Chaos Dreadnought's ability, where he sort of goes Berserker mode, is not a good thing when you've got lots of melee units, because he's just as likely to attack you as he is to attack them. And we have a Zoentrope coming onto the field to get a bit of regen on the Carnifex. Remember, the Carnifex is also adding a synapse to these uh, to these other guys here. Here, that corn guy finally. There's the corn. Absolutely, this should have been on these marines a long time ago. That zoetrope needs to be targeted. They're very, very easy to kill. Just a teleport with the. Oh, look, he's going to be shot. Ah, oh, he's using the Zoetrope solely. Wow, he's doing tremendous damage. And there's the teleport onto the Zoetrope, but no luck. Absolutely brilliant fight going on here. Look how well much damage those corn marines, upgraded marines did. Absolutely decimated the army that time. Brilliant, brilliant play. I don't think this dreadnought can go toe to toe here. Looks like we had another blood sacrifice. Oh, this is going to go down. That's it. Bye bye. Luckily, he was uh, away from the troops because there is there's the blood sacrifice disappearing. Excellent use of the chaos global. Oh, and he might even lose his lictor now. Knock down, knock down charge, but completely fails. And there's another Carnifex. Short-lived victory. I'm not going to see that again. Definitely has to pull off this thing. Luckily, he is doing some capping in the backgrounds. Again, those corn havocs doing a fantastic job, but everyone needs to get the hell out of there. Another kind of effects being built. So annoying how you can't have the entire army list in this window. Don't know what this Chaos Lord thinks he's doing. E absolutely excellent <laughs> galaxy burn. Look at that. There's the power of that ability, completely driving this force backwards. I mean, that middle point looked completely lost, but out comes Big Daddy Chaos Lord.
and everything changes. He didn't actually kill a Termagrant Brood Squad, but he came very, very close. But I think the second Dreadnought is probably not the best idea. I probably would have gone with another another Plague Marine. He has lost both his Heretic Squads and his Chaos Marine Squads. Oh no, there's his Heretic Squad. Again, how annoying. You just cannot... that you can't see the entire army list in this window. I wish there was a way you could do that. But without those, without the worship on those uh, blood letters, it's really, they're really not going to be even slightly as powerful. Another blood sacrifice going down. Actually, very, very good play by Red Things Go Faster here. Really shows you the resilience that Chaos can have when it's played well, when you're using all their techie abilities. And once again, even with two Carnifexes on the field, he was driven off. But here comes the counter push, push almost immediately and the alpha is going to pop up here and decap this node but unfortunately for him we do have these marines just hanging out once again guarding this area only one single plague marine left from this squad Looks like he's waiting for his Carnifex, so he has two Carnifexes and just to finish this in one go. This uh, Lictor is going to try and interrupt this capping. Of course, he can't flesh hook. Alpha did go down. He did not get the cap off either. Oh, and there goes the last of the Plague Marines. I think that was a terrible mistake not retreating them. Watch the yes, those heretics have to retreat. Here comes the second Carnifex. Galaxy Burn. All the tricks coming out. This is a fantastic game. Red Things Goes Faster, you are a legend, and Arka, you are just pummeling this guy. Very, very good play here. I'm enjoying it immensely. We really should see some upgrades. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of wreck and power, but if the, this guy switched to his claws, he would be able to do a lot more damage to those large, heavy units. But even so, he did get one almost dead and one down to half. Sorry for my mouse movement, my cat is lying all over my freaking hand again. <laughs> I'll take a photo of it and I'll stick it in the, in the video. And again, uncapping that middle point, but I don't think he's going to have enough time to recap it. has had no time to buy any of his things. It looks like maybe he's trying to go to tier 3 and get out of Predator, but I think that would be a bad decision. 
and probably a game losing decision. I'd like to see more Plague Marines on the field. Ah, oh, go away, cat. Yep, these lictors doing a great job. Of course, here comes the blood letters to stop him. Looks like he's going to tell. Them. And that's going to be one was probably enough. And these guys should be heading straight back to the main blob. I actually just finished painting one of these carnifexes a couple of days ago. Painted them a very similar colour to that. Okay, you're not going to be able to get this cap off, I don't think. Run for it, you don't want to lose that heretic squad. Beautiful knockdown ability there, saving that Carnifex. Have to move that Heretic squad up a little bit. Once again, Arca just cannot seem to gain ground on this. Uh, incredibly demon heavy worshipping army there's only one heretic he really needs to kill that heretic because that would completely cripple this army which is so demon based he's getting another blood letter so that's three blood letters So all he needs to do is kill those kill those heretics. He should be jumping down there with the Carnifex. I'd let the galaxy burn. This is the stage of the game where it gets very, very easy to make mistakes because now there's so much going on. It's so easy for someone to drop a AoE like that, let the galaxy burn, and you've not moved your squads in time. This is when small mistakes will come completely wreck the outcome of the game. Here they go. Switch to that heretic. Do it, Arka, do it! Ah, oh, switch to the heretic! Oh, I'm so going for Arka, but... Yeah, completely wrong decision here. There we go. That's the way. Awesome. Okay. That's the end of all his heretics. His entire demon army is now absolutely not even half the power it used to be. So we could very well see a change at the next push. Beautiful jump. And like, might even go down. Oh no. Red things, you've just had a incredible loss. The loss of that heretic and the loss of those. Uh, the new heretic squads popping up. Now of course, heretic numbers and heretic level does not have an effect upon the regent, uh, the uh, worship ability. So buying a fresh heretic squad is not actually a strange thing to do, while buying, say, a, a fresh uh, Space Marine squad at this stage can be a little bit of a waste of money. But there goes the second Dreadnought, and really there is not much Red Things has left to combat this army.
I think there was a few errors in his uh, response builds, but he's done an extremely good job, and it's not over yet. We've got level two, what, well, one level two blood crusher, and everyone else is level one, but level four tormagons, level three warriors, level two carnifexes. I mean, this is a very, very scary Tyranid army. blood sacrifice on them that's an expensive blood sacrifice but then again absolutely vital that he retains these VPs at this point he is not purchasing the inspiring champion that cost increase has been doubled but I do actually like the positioning of these guys. They're well out of the way of the fight at the node, but he can just retreat just a little bit to get into the into there. While the initial the initial uh, it's tempting initially to have your heretics close to the fight, but then I think they would have been attacked a lot earlier. That's quite an interesting little trick he's done there. And here comes a Tyranniform. Get the hell out of there. Now they go from clockwise. They go clockwise, so it's very easy to... Oh my god. He just... Sacrificed one of his units there. Just so he could get that cap off. That's how desperate he was for that cap. I really think that wasn't a particularly good idea, nor was the repurchase. And yeah, that was just absolutely the wrong decision to, to stick inside the Tyranniform. He's had his armies decimated. I don't think there's any coming back now. But that was extremely good play by both players here. I, I thought the game was swung in both directions. At one stage I thought it was an absolute rout by Arca and then I thought, wow, Red Things is going to take this and now I'm almost certain. Oh, I keep forgetting to turn off all the things that beep and ding in my stupid computer. And there's the GG. Excellent game. Well, there's no actual GG, but there's the end of the game. Absolutely fantastic game by Arca and Red Things. But there you have it. End of game and a very, very, very good game in my opinion. There was some great back and forth, some use of some pretty heavy globals by the Chaos Lord. Unfortunately, I'm not a particularly expert uh, Tyranid player, so it's, it's hard for me to see a lot of the abilities going down. But... I didn't see a lot of globals coming out of the uh, Arca player, unfortunately, but we did see the Tyranniform at the end, which really shouldn't have been the game changer it was. That Tyranniform, he should have completely retreated off those nodes and gone to the side nodes, put his whole army to the side nodes, and just the, the choice to try and stick through it. I, th I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to stick through it, get that cap off and then fade shift those units but of course I mean that just did not work and yeah completely decimated his army so uh, a risky decision at the end there which of course cost him the game but at the same time he was always seemed to be a bit on the back foot I think that his choices in encounters for the Carnifexes were not as good as they could have been going for the heavy the heavy uh, demon army while very effective to my surprise really lacked the ability to do more than push back his army and I think if he had two Plague Marine squads instead of 
instead of uh, like the fourth or third Demon Squad, then it would have been a very different game. Instead of maybe the second Dreadnought, a second Plague Marine squad on the field, I mean, it would have been different. But Arca, absolutely fantastic game. Great work, Red Thing. I'll uh, keep an eye out for your other games. See you next time.